Alright, I'm Matt Yabowski and I'm going to talk to you today about uh, the budgeting for the per performing arts programs at our school. So imagine that you're sitting at a football game on a lovely Friday night about to watch the, the Royal football team crush the opponent and when you're asked to stand for the national anthem there's no choir to sing it for you. You sit there and you listen to a sad re recording of somebody that you don't even know singing this song when you could have a great choir singing it for you with your friends that you know and people that you like to see in school. And then imagine that after the first half, the, the football team leaves the field and nobody comes on to, to, to replace them. There's nobody there for the halftime performance and you just sit there in silence. These, these scenarios seem pretty far away, but they both could happen if budgeting for performing arts programs continues to be cut. Don't, don't you want to hear that amazing choir, and don't you want to hear that very loud marching band and see them perform their amazing show? Now, these are both great forms of, of entertainment, but aside from the entertainment, uh, choir programs and orchestra programs and band programs are very fun classes that students love to go to with their friends and they provide important life skills for these students and uh, they provide an academic ad advantage to these students and help them throughout their whole life. But these programs are getting less and less money every year so soon enough they won't be able to continue. Now I'm I'm mainly going to focus on the marching band because I'm in the marching band, so I have a personal connection to it, and I know a lot about it. Um, and every year we have a new show that requires new props, new music, uh, new people to help us out with the, with the music. And the props are, are very expensive themselves, and they, they take a lot of our budget to, to buy those and to keep them in good shape. And the music also costs money. It's it's not as expensive, but it, it does take a little bit of it. But we also have to hire staff to help us perform the show the way that we need to, to help us play the music that we need that that we that we need to. Um, and this is around ten people every year to help us from ev everything from uh, wind music to percussion to body movement and color guard. And um, these these coaches or techs as we call them, they're not like normal coaches who are paid by the school and hired by the school. We have to find them and hire them ourselves using our own budget. So that, that takes a large chunk of our budget. Um, another portion of our budget must go to in instrument repairs because there are sometimes accidents that happen on the field and we have to re repair instruments if they get damaged. And another part of the marching man is our uniforms. And uh, most marching men get new, new uniforms around every eight years. And our marching man has had the same uniforms for over 20 years. So they're, they're getting pretty old. And um, we've had the same uniforms since before we split with Fishers. And Fishers has had two new sets of, 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 of uniforms since they split from us. So we're, ours are starting to get outdated, and we were supposed to get our new uniforms this past season, but because we did not have enough budgeting, we, we were not able to get them, and because of that, we've had countless amounts of fundraisers, and uh, despite our efforts, these fundraisers have not raised enough money to get us our uniforms. Uh, we did fundraisers at restaurants like Culver's and Buffalo Wild Wings and Snappy Tomato Pizza, um, and we also went for bigger fundraisers, such as a mattress sale that we had at the school. And uh, one that was kind of far-fetched, we tried to sell uh, mailboxes, which was very um, hard to sell. <laughs> so despite all of those efforts, we still could not raise the amount of money that we needed. But even though the marching man is suffering, we are not the only ones. Um, the, the choir programs and orchestra programs also are suffering from low budgeting and they, they need things like, like we do. They need music, they need uh, people to help them with the music and 
The orchestra program also needs money for instrument repairs. And if these classes continue to lose funding, it, it, it takes away a whole job field for students who participate in them. And uh, at least for me, I, I love going to band class and I love marching band. And I'm sure all the choir students and orchestra students can say the same. So if, if that class is taken away, it could take away one of the best classes that they have and it can take away what they're really passionate about, about music. So that, and also there's uh, many ways that money could be saved in other parts of the school to uh, maybe come more to us. And that was in, in the Mac Labs, at least what I think is the Mac Labs, I, I think that they were a large waste of money because the school required every student to get a new laptop or tablet. So I don't see why we needed Mac Labs if everybody has their own device. And so that's just one way that we could raise more money for the marching band and the orchestra and choir programs. So al although we are not widely recognized, we do provide a large academic advantage to students and we give them a fun class and a fun activity to do after school. Um, uh, the, they, they provide entertainment for the fans at a football game and you can, you can help keep these programs alive just by the next time that there's a budgeting meeting, you can say, why don't we see if we can give any more to the performing arts programs. Thank you.